Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. My name is Nada Radin, your host for today. Welcome to our new program by Answers Interview Influencer. So for our first episode today, we've invited a special guest who's an entrepreneur and full-time student to share with us her own story. Welcoming Fazana Shasha Binti Abdul Malik, a student of entrepreneurship in management and science university Shah Alam Slamour. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you Nadia for the opportunity. And hi everyone. <laughs> okay. Uh, so can you please uh, introduce yourself for the ones who might not know? Okay. You. Thank you Nadia. So my name is Farzana Shasha binti Abdul Malik. I was born in 9 September 1998. Uh, in social media, I've known as Gladys Lensa. Uh, my, usually people call me Shasha. So I'm the eldest from two siblings. And I took diploma in business administration for two years and eight months in International Islamic College. And right now I'm studying, still studying, Bachelor of Entrepreneurship in MSU. Why did I choose MSU? It is because uh, it's near to my house and since I have a few things to do in one time, uh, managing tadika and so on, so I need to choose the nearest place. Yes. Mm, I see. So, um, so currently you have your own business, right? Yes. Uh, so what is your first business and how many businesses are you managing at the moment? Well, when I was in the primary school, I started to sell cute stationery back then. I'm sure every each of you, especially girls, love those cute fancy stationery, right? Mm -hmm. So, like, uh, back then, my friend liked to borrow my stationery, so I took that chance to gain money from that situation and solve their problem. Mostly, my customers, my customers are girls. Every evening, uh, they would come to my house and take a look for the stock that I bought. Uh, I bought it from GM, as you can know. You know, right? All right. So, uh, in that age, well, parents, mostly, they don't allow them to go far away to buy that kind of stationery, just to buy that kind of stationery. So, I took the chance to uh, buy, buy it and bring to the school. The funny thing is, my mom, I mean my parents, give the capital and I took all the profit. <laughs> Alright, my parents never asked for the profit actually. So, wherever there is any charity at school, so I will, I will use that profit to share it to my school. Okay. Then, move on to when I was in a secondary school, I start to join dropship selling cosmetic and sell some trendy things on that time the most popular thing is a uh, macro white lens do you know that uh, the white lens yeah the white lens oh, okay. and the monopod itself with a bluetooth remote so oh. yeah uh, after SPM, i do eye lens eye lens as coverage i'm selling it under my own brand my hijab so, i selling all the product in Lazada, Zalora, Shopee, and I do have a few agents that time. Mm. So, uh, why I choose Lazada and Zalora? Because they got the system, so I have no problem to handle it while I'm, st I'm still studying. So, when I got some order, my parent will help me, and after class, I need to continue the feeling, uh, I, mean, I mean, take orders, replying customers, WhatsApp, and uh, packing, uh, to be a uh, truth to be told, the scarf itself, I some of it I do saw it in my uh, in my home with my mom, and some of it I do send it to the factory. Wow! Yes. After that, uh, I start to release a new product, which is known as Islands BB Cream and Islands New Skin. This one we do with uh, in a partnership. Seriously, truth to be told, please, if you want to do business, I won't suggest you to do a partnership because if you want to if you want to do the partnership, you need to do the agreement letter, uh, you need, uh, there is a pros and cons in partnership things because 
I learned a lot from this business. Uh, this is such a ex huge experience for me and my family itself. Do you want to share with us? Um, um, for this experience, okay. Um, this business uh, we do by partnership. Uh, me and my family, we do in uh, we invest for the capital itself, and then we do have a few stockies and agents. So, uh, in the middle of the business, uh, there is you know uh, when you gain a lot of profit, you will have uh, what we say some losses. So, um, bila ada banyak duit depan mata, so we, uh, kita sendiri akan macam, you know, rambang yeah, mata. mata. Yes, <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. So, on that time, you will forgot uh, my, nah, you will forgot your, your own partner, you will forgot uh, who the, what we say, the ones who are there for you. Yes. Yes. Um, and then, uh, in the middle, we have a lot of misunderstanding. So my parents decide to stop it. And then on that time, uh, we have that one. At that time, is uh, where uh, my business went thin down, and then we stop. And then we sell uh the the balance of the stock. And then during this MCO. I started to uh, start up my business with Kuna Bites. So during this MCO, I find that uh, most of the people uh, love to eat. So as I start to make Kuna Bites itself uh, first, no, last week. The last week before Raya, the last week of Ramadan before Raya. Mm -hmm. So I start to make, I, I start to bake Kuna and then uh, at first, I bake it for my house, so for my family to eat for a year, and then I received a lot of DM. They asked me, they asked me, it's either I'm selling it or not, and then I took the chance to sell it, and Alhamdulillah, in one week, I can gain four figures, and I receive a lot of order. From that, I start to help my friends who are in it. I'm sure during MCO, people, uh especially students like me uh, they want to <laughs> they want to gain money side income so i enjoy uh, i create this business uh, to help those uh, especially students to gain side income i teach them how to get profit in kuna bites with the magic numbers in kuna bites we are I do create an agent system, agent system, mm -hmm. but I treat them like a family. Even all my agents are business person, but we are helping each other. Alhamdulillah, the Kunya Bites itself, uh, we just started it at 1 June 2020, and it's mm -hmm. but all my agents, mostly, they are side income, I mean, they are sales, total sales, reaching four figure. Wow, that's great. Uh, uh, so basically, what do you sell in Kuna Bites? What? What do you sell? What do you bake in Kuna Bites? Uh, it's actually Kuna Bites is a Florentine cookies. This one. Can you see it? Can you see it? Uh -huh. Okay, this yeah. is Florentine cookies. Um, you might want to promote your Kuna Bites as well. So actually, uh, Kuna Bites is a Florentine cookies that rich with nut, premium, with, uh, with a pumpkin seed, sunflower seed, and almond slices, with a great, prim a good premium ingredient inside it. I'll surely will try. <laughs> you should. You should. So right now we are currently uh, Kunya Bite currently uh, open for agent around Malaysia. Alhamdulillah, within one month I have fifteen agents, including Sabah, Sarawak, Johor, and KL, Klang, Banting, and many more. Oh yeah, Perak. Wow, that's amazing. 
So, uh, so basically, you, you're still a full student, full time student. Yes, I'm how a full time student. You, so, how do you manage your time? Uh, how do you manage your business while being a full time student? Actually, it's hard. But my parents actually want to teach me how to manage people surrounding, dealing with outside uh, strangers. Mm -hmm. They teach they teach me how to control my emotion. My parents always teach me to divide my time between studies and business. I do have my own timetable. Uh, Tracy, sometimes I, feel I, I have no time with my friends. Sometimes I can't reply their texts on time. Mm -hmm. And usually back then, I'm... I'm a fast replier, but because of I'm doing a lot of things in one time, sometimes I, I reply them late. But Alhamdulillah, all my friends is very, very understanding. They understood me well. So, so while I'm, I'm a full-time student actually, so when there are some people, uh, they create a reason, they keep give the excuses uh, that they can't uh, do a lot of things in one time. But actually, they are wrong. Being a full-time student doesn't mean you can't be a business person itself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think that's all. So, what are the challenges of being part-time business as a full-time student? The challenges itself? Okay. Um, well, I'm sure all of you are students. Uh, we have tons of assignments. We have... Uh, we have meeting with committees and we have meet up we need to meet up with the lecturers for a mentoring session and so on so the most challenging part is when you need to divide your time to finish your assignment on time but you need mm -hmm. to finish but you need at the same time you need to do your work and finish it on time both things are very important business and the study itself sometimes the when when you need to handle there are parts when you want to handle your own you want to manage your business i mean you want to you need to settle out your business there are some there are some part when your classmates sometimes they don't understand you i mean they they need to they don't have in that situation with us you know they don't that like they can't feel what I feel. You know, being full-time student, it's quite a heavy thing for you to manage the time between studies and the business. Besides that, the challenges that I face is the rejection. People think that student doing business, are you sure you can't hand you can handle the business? But it's actually that that all kind that kind of excuses is such as nonsense excuses. <laughs> mm -hmm. There are part of when uh the challenges the other challenges that I face is that the people the people surround you surrounding you, I mean the positive people and the negative negative the negative one you need to choose it properly either you want to involve in the positive zone or you want to involve in the negative right okay so uh earlier on you said that you are taking entrepreneurship in and yes yes so how did you apply what you learn from what yeah how did you apply what you learn into your business I learned how to market my bus my business like in e-commerce. I learned how to handle loss and profit. I learned how to fit people behavior. Uh, I learned how to handle my emotion, handle my stress while being a student, need to manage my business and my stuff. I learned how to uh yes, I learned how to be strong. Uh well, being under a pressure for being a student, and then at the same time, you need to handle your business and your stuff and as in itself. Well, I enjoy the business actually doing this. Hearing this. What? Oh. 
you enjoy doing it, yeah? Yes. Um, so, what is your advice for the students who want to start up their business? And if they want to try something out of their comfort zone? Mm, my advice is, we are still young. You don't need to feel comfortable with your comfort you have, we have right now. Enjoy too much here and there. I'm not saying you can't enjoy every single thing. You can, but you need to standard it. Okay? With the current economic uncertainty, we have to be careful and safe for the next six months because anything can happen without our, own ex without our expectation. Until when, we need to rely on our parents. Right? Mm -hmm, true. Mm -hmm. So, uh... I have my own team, so I keep on saying, I teach them on how to save their money, how to divide their own capital and the profit itself. So they need to be disciplined with their, with their money, with their profit. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, and they need, they need to know how to save their own money because it do help them in the future to survive, right? So other than that, uh, for me, you need to remove your own ego. Sometimes people don't want to do business because they have their own ego. They think they are very comfortable in their own zone. So, other than that, we need to remove the uncertainty in ourselves. Okay, uh, besides that, for me, my parents keep on uh, advising me that you need to take care of your relationship with Allah, your parents, and your surrounding. Don't forget your Quran and Salah. Other than that, uh, you need to give sedekah. The more you give, the more you get. Mm -hmm. For me, uh, to all those students who are still scared to start a business, do something today that yourself will thank you for. There are no secret to success. It's, it is the result of the preparation, hard work, and learning from the failures. Mm -hmm. I guess if if back then when I was uh, start, uh when I was handling a business, I learned these skills. If on that time, if I uh jatuh, I don't think that I have kuna bite right now. Yeah, I read somewhere it says, uh, if you fall seven times, stand up eight times. Yes, yeah, true. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, I learned a lot from your own story. Is there anything else that you might want to say? Any last words? Mm. Oh, alright. So, for all students, who still scared to start your own business, your own business, you don't need to worry. If you don't have any capital or any big money, you can start your business uh, to be a dropship first and then you can upgrade yourself from dropship to agent and then you learn, you can learn all those things, the system, how to handle money, how to handle the team, how to handle your emotion and so on. So after that, uh, after you can do all those things, then surely you can have your own business. You can, uh, you can have your own brand. Actually, if you are, uh, if you are being an agent, actually, you can gain more income instead of make a new brand. Have your own brand. As you can see, uh, there is a lot of news told that they can uh, gain side income by selling uh, by selling others business just being an agent their income can be more than seven figures so why don't you start mm -hmm. so i hope um the ones who are watching this uh, learn as much as i did and i hope uh, they can benefit from this um, session so I think um, that's all for uh, our first episode. Thank you so much for Zana Shasha.